It's Aloha Friday, my friends. This is Billy Wiggly coming at you live from the Ninth Island, Las Vegas, Nevada. And what a good day we are having today. We are finally on Aloha Friday. Finally going to complete the process that we've been working on for the last two weeks where we use the Excel Formula Bot as we test it out. Let's see. Let me share with you the Excel formula bot that we've been working with all week. We've been trying it out. As you all know, Excel formula bot, where is my Excel formula? Oop, 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 excuse me a second. Let me share, uh, change the screen that we, we are sharing. And da 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 There we have it, right here, the Excel Formula Bot. So we've been using the Excel Formula Bot all last week. Uh, when you try it out, you get five tries. I liked it so much that I signed up for a month. And then next thing you know, I just went ahead and signed up for a whole year. And we can log in, and you can see that the Excel Formula Bot, we can uh, write formulas with it for Google Sheets, for Excel, we can even ask it to explain formulas to uh, for us. And it's also got this other feature. It's got the VBA feature where we can type in the VBA or the task that we want to have the Excel formula bot write, a, write the code for us. And then we press submit. It gives us an output of the code. And then what do we do with the code? We got to know what to do with the code. So what we've got today is we've got our friend Daniel Strong from Excel VBA is fun. He's an Excel VBA expert. And let's bring him right on board. Here we go. My friend Dan, how are you doing hey, today? Billy. Hey, man. Glad to be here. Doing great. Sure is nice to have you, man. I really enjoyed taking a look at some of your the ultimate Excel VBA course. And hey, don't you have a, a free VBA course that you get people started in on? Absolutely. Yep. Well, yep. Which one but, is it right here on your on your website? So I don't know where uh, I don't know where the link is actually. I know if you go to my website and just take that URL slash free hyphen training. We're doing a little bit of a redesign right now, but if you go to my website slash free hyphen training. I know that's one way you can get to the free training. Oh, did I give you the wrong URL? Maybe well, you can share with me in the in the chat and I'll post it for us. You but got it. It's a great way to get started with VBA. VBA is the language of Excel. And you can get Excel to do anything when you use VBA. Many of you have probably been hearing about VBA and thinking to yourself, hey, I really want to get into VBA, but you haven't figured out exactly you know, how to go about and approach it. Well, one way is just to get started using, uh, using Daniel's free course. You send me that link? Let's see. Here yeah. we go. Got... Might have been a typo. Yeah, it's just slash free hyphen training. Yep. All right. Let's take a quick, yeah. let's take a quick look. And let me uh, copy that. I'm going to put this in the chat for us. So awesome. that everybody has access to it. Awesome. All right. Hey, Larry. Hey, what's up? Gafir from Algeria. How are you doing today? And then we've also got... Uh, uh, Gafir is in... Uh, we also got Rocky. Check it out. Rocky is in Cape Town. What is up, Rocky? How are you? Are you a... Are you, a VBA proficient Excel user, or are you wanting to learn more about the Excel formula bot and how you can use it to write VBA code with? Larry, 
is the screen still a little bit fuzzy for you? Let me know. It should already be, uh, it, it could be your connection because uh, we've tested everything out and I've got multiple connections. It's all uh, coming in pretty good. It's only when we switch uh, screens where it's, uh, it started coming in. Hey, what's up, Manush coming from Miami. Gee, who? what's up? How's the weather over there? Over here in Las Vegas, it's sunny and nice. Lucky. Yeah. <laughs> what, what's going on in, in Missouri? It's just murky out, a little cold. Yeah, man. Oh, not bad. So. Not bad. You should come visit us in Vegas. But we stay yeah, positive. Maybe. The weather doesn't affect us. We are always no. staying positive. Hey, what's this? Go Niners. Yay, go Niners. Right on. <laughs> Woo. I'm not really a big football fan, but I think they – Aren't they like a top team? Aren't they going to the playoffs? Do you know about that, Dan? I do not know anything about it. Well, we got our friend did. from from Romania, oh, wow. Bogdan. What's going on? Hey, McAllen, Texas. Don't mess with Texas. Project Save the World is working at. Hey, Save Eric. The world for hey, buddy. You see people you know over here? Yeah, the Excel. Oh, enthusiast. look at this. Eric. Look at this. What's up, buddy? Rocky is what one happens? of your students, Dan. Woohoo! Right oh, on. Man, you're reading fast. Oh, great. Hey, thank you, Rocky. I appreciate that, man. That's awesome. And then now uh, we got Manusha letting us know that it's a little bit cold for Florida, but you know, hey, we feeling good. Hey, this is it. Somebody saying hi to you, Dan. It's the yeah. Excel enthusiast. Yeah. Hey, those of you that I got links to your own websites or your own YouTube channels, share them in the chat. The more, the merrier. We got to exercise habit number six of highly effective people. You know, the seven habits of highly effective people. Habit number six is synergize. Steven, my mm. friend, it's been years since I saw you. Go Cowboys. Hey, uh, that's cool. <laughs> Cowboys are cool. Don't you got that guy, uh, Dak Prescott? I feel, I feel really proud of myself because I'm actually mentioning names of football players and i don't i'm not really a sports guy <laughs> steven peacock man steven was one of one of my students in a seminar that i taught in texas back in like 2011 2012 nice. right on steven looking good brother all right <laughs> project save the world is laughing and what is the free training link let's see i think i put it in the chat already if i didn't let me uh go ahead and put it in there again so i just put the link to the free vba course in there and i'm saying you go ahead and sign right up for it Woo! too much excitement going on right now my brother <laughs> what do you think well, I agree. Oh, man, I, I tall. love this. Am I really this tall? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Go. Hey, man. So um, why don't we go ahead and uh, let's get started. Let's check it out. Let's go right over to uh, – this is what we're going to work on today. I'm going to close this window, and we're going to let Dan go ahead and – Hey, wait. Check it out. We got a surprise. We've got – the man, the developer himself, oh, the person responsible for David. this fun that we are having today, Mr. David Bressler. Hello. Right on, my friend. How are you today? I'm good. Can you hear me loud and clear? Yeah. Yes, yes, we can. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. I am uh, uh, in my full-time job office right now, so I made sure to close the door for the secret little call that I'm on for my side project. So here I am. <laughs> Look how dedicated you are. huh? Yeah. Hey, all of you out there listening to us, that's how you got to be. No matter what it takes, you're always working on achieving that definite major purpose and making your dream real. Woohoo! You got to hustle, right? That's right, man. Hustling all the time, you know, and enjoying your life too while we're at it. I mean, there's a reason why we're hustling, right? So that we can get to that point where we just enjoy our lives. And we're going to enjoy today. I just got a quick question for you, David. Why? Well, why, why the Excel formula bot? Man, so, uh, you know, my, my full-time job, uh, I, I work for marketing and marketing analytics agency called net conversion 
And, uh, you know, post COVID, we were a big part, a uh, big wave of the great resignation. We, uh, a lot of people left. We had to hire a lot of people. We hired a lot of young talent. A lot of what we do on a day to day basis is in Excel. And for really all of 2021, I just became like the Excel guy. And so a lot of these young folks, they came to me, they're like, how do I do this? How do I do that? And I've got my own things to take care of. And I couldn't get, <laughs> I couldn't get bogged down by it. And so, you know, last year, middle of the year, last year, I, um, I was on paternity leave. Uh, I was off for six weeks and I'm someone who, uh, my wheels are always spinning. I'm always thinking of something. I've got a, a laundry list of shower thoughts and I was <laughs> like, you know what? AI is becoming pretty popular. I've got six weeks to build something. And uh, I started playing around with AI. I was like, I wonder, because I work in analytics, so AI is kind of the, the, the next evolution. Uh, analytics is kind of like the gateway drug. And I started playing around with it and I asked it, uh, What's the sum of what's the formula for sum of column A? And it got it right. And then I was like, let's ask it a harder question. And it got that right. And I'm like, I think I'm on <laughs> something. And so, uh, of course, the next day I go on Google. I'm looking to see does this already exist? And I'm freaking out. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to build it. And so I really built it uh, initially thinking it would be like an internal tool for my team. So that way they'd stop asking me questions so I can go on with my day. Uh, and then I posted it on Reddit uh, thinking I would get, you know, two or three testers testing it out. And I posted it on Reddit. And next day that Reddit post got like 20,000 upvotes. It was then reposted to another uh, Reddit where there was about 100,000 upvotes. Next day, guy on my team calls me up and says, hey, there was a big guy, a big social influencer on TikTok who has 5 million followers. He just talked about your video. So then I downloaded TikTok for the first time. I didn't even have it. Uh, and I saw it. I'm like, oh, my God. I started freaking out. And at that time, uh, at that time, I wasn't it wasn't even a subscription. It was like the Hunger Games, man. You go to the site and it was a free for all. There was no login, no cost. And I quickly racked up uh, several thousand dollars in API AI, uh, AI costs. And I'm like, oh my God, like I need to build this thing fast. I needed to build a paywall. I needed to build uh, logins. And so for a month, uh, I just uh, locked myself in a room, built it to what it is today. And uh, okay, wait, wait. Then we've got about 200,000 people that sign up. You did this in six weeks? Yeah. With a brand new baby? Yeah. And a three-year-old. And a full-time. Man. And a wife. So are y'all all listening to, to <laughs> David? Most of us, we got a lot of people always asking us. You know, when you know a little bit about Excel, always people are like, uh, what's a VLOOKUP? Or can you take a look at this here real quick for me? Or, you know, this is no big deal. And, and we, you know, you go in and you help them. How many of us decided, you know what? I'm just going to write, design some AI that they can use so that they can stop bothering me. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. I mean, I, 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 don't get me wrong. I've got bags under my eye, uh, both right. of them. But, um, but yeah, it's been a, it's been a journey and uh, I'm looking forward to what happens next. Cause I don't even know. You know, it's, you've got imitators now. So Ooh, what is it they say there's that when about, there's about 20 of them? Yeah. So don't they say something about imitation is the greatest form of flattery? Yeah. I and, mean, when, um, when they started popping up, I was getting so frustrated. I was, I was, I was getting genuinely upset because some of them, they don't have a full-time job. They don't have a wife. They don't have two kids. They're some punk ass college kid. Who's got time for himself. <laughs> And um, I was getting really frustrated. And then I realized like, hey, it's the exact phrase that you said. And they also don't have the vision that I have in here. And so even yesterday or a couple weeks ago, I, I rolled out a new feature of where users can select their, uh, their Excel version because there are some formulas uh, like text join or text lookup that you can't get in older Excel versions and people were complaining. So I was like, okay, 
I'll build out that feature. And then I follow all the competitors on social media and they're doing the same thing just weeks after. Um, and so I think in AI, especially, I, I do think uh, first mover has a huge, huge advantage uh, because that's the one that, you know, I'm, I'm still riding the coattails of virality and people talking about it. I've spent less than a thousand dollars on marketing. And I mentioned the hundreds of thousands of people that have used it. And so for first movers and AI goes a long way. You know, so some of those uh, imitators have gone as far as imitating the look of your website. I mean, they've copied everything. I, I went to one of those imitators and I thought it was your website for a second. And so I started looking closely and it's, it's actually not the Excel formula bot. Everything else is like the Excel formula bot except the name. You know, and that was really interesting. I don't know if this is a question that you can answer for us, but that we got Shant Killian here asking, you know, what language is it written in? So the actual, um, the code base, uh, I actually, it's going to be sound crazy, um, but I'm not a coder. I'm not a software engineer. Um, there's a lot of uh, technology out there these days uh, that are no code web applications. Uh, and so one of them is called Bubble, bubble.io. Uh, anyone uh, who just is has some time to read documentation can build a, a web application just like this without writing a single line of code. Uh, and so the language it was written in was just, uh, it wasn't written in anything. It's actually, the building it out is actually very similar to working in Excel. Uh, there's a lot of parallels. It's a lot of rule-based logic. So I would encourage you to, to, to take a look at it. You know, it's just like what anytime AI comes out, like I started sharing the Excel formula, but I spent already like a week and a half live streaming about it because I like it so much. And, and then I've got, I always get the question, aren't you worried that you're going to lose your job because of AI? And like, the more I use the Excel formula bot, the more I realize you really got to know Excel basics. Because how are you going to ask the question? I mean, we got to know how to ask the right question so that we can get the right answer. You know, that's why I'm always saying E plus R equals O. And if you don't know the, if you don't know the basics, you know, E plus R equals O event, your response, how you ask the question determines the outcome. So we're always focused on the outcome that we desire and that formulates the question, right? So like with VBA, like I was saying, we can use the VBA code generator and it generates a code for us, but then what do we do with the code? One thing that I thought was pretty cool about the uh, Excel formula bot was the part where we can go into formulas and we can ask it to explain, oh, basic tasks. This one right here, where we can just, like, like Excel has the, <laughs> its own built-in AI, sort of it. It's called the data analysis tool. And when you click on the data analysis tool, it analyzes the data and then it suggests usually a pivot table for you and some pivot charts. What I like about the Excel formula bot is it'll tell us how to make that pivot table, the steps necessary, and that really enhances our learning because you can have a pivot table, then what? It always ends up being, and then what? So today what we have is, you know, instead of me or, or you, David, trying to, you know, neither one of us or us are coders, trying to come in here and play around with uh, the Excel formula bot and have it generate some VBA code for us. And then we're kind of like gonna fumble through it. Well, we got an expert. We got our friend, Dan Strong. So, hey, Dan, why don't you go right ahead and uh, just take a just share your screen with us right sure. here? And um, let me move some stuff around you, here. Let me know when you're ready for me to share that screen. I think I am ready now. All right, so let's go. Let's take a look at what you, you guys got. See this? What you're up to. Up down. Oh yeah, I'm looking from. I got three monitors. I'm like, yeah, that looks good. Awesome. Well, um, yeah. So. I just want to speak to what you said, uh, Billy, though. Like, I agree. It's like you've been talking about all week. It's There's no way this is going to replace us. It's going to help enhance people to have these tools. But we use these tools to, you know, we can learn syntax. We can learn how things work. 
But ultimately, uh, sometimes with AI, you have to be able to recognize either A, um, there's something just barely wrong with this, or, or more likely, you know, I know enough from the syntax that I just got from AI. Now I can take that and tweak it with other stuff because I have that foundation of knowing some things in VBA or in, or in Excel and using formula. So it's just like, it's just another tool and it's a powerful tool. So yeah, um, I wanted to start off with exactly what it says right here in this little placeholder. So, you know, that's when, when you and I were testing this together and Billy, we were like, Hey, let's just try right that. See where it says print all worksheet names. So I'm just going to type that out for a good yeah, demonstration. Just to, just to, yeah, I'm going to interrupt you real quick there. Uh, Dan said, Hey everybody, Dan said uh, that we met before this to test out a few things. I just want you to know that that's the only time I've ever done that. Uh, because Dan is very thorough and he wants to make sure everything's working right. As you all know, the purpose of this show is we just go live and we just go for it just to prove to you that uh, you can do it yourself too if we can, if I can do it. Right. All I appreciate right. that. Yeah, I was like freaking out. Like, you know, I don't go live very often, Billy, and you're so good at this. Can you please let me in the studio and let me just look around and everything? And uh, and then I, you know, I got an account with this. So, um Hey, real show, quick, not, so ahead. real quick, it actually just goes to show how little I actually look at the VBA section because I also just realized that the output on this is the output for the Excel formula, <laughs> at least the placeholder. So I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm going to make a real time change. So I want you to, to type in uh, print all worksheet names. If you can copy and paste the actual output and I'll update it in real time so you guys can take a look at it so I can fix it with you. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'll paste that in the ch in the chat. That's a yeah. good idea. So let me do that. Can you still see my screen, guys? Yeah. Okay. So let's see. Print all worksheet names. This is, this is actually your screen right there. That was my right. screen we were looking at. There we go. All right. Print oh, all okay. worksheet names. So as soon as you hit submit. Oh, it, is, it is right. Okay. Yeah. You see it? Okay. So I'm going to hit submit, and we're going to see what it says. Or is this the... Oh, okay, we were looking at we were looking at the wrong screen. You were, you were looking at part. my screen that for some reason okay. uh, was was you know that's that's something that I that I did notice, uh, David, yeah. is that if I'm in the formulas tab, like yeah. for example, I'm I go to the formulas, yeah, right, and then I went back to VBA. That's when this didn't change. The output part didn't change. It was showing that sum if. I don't know. It's like there's like oh, it might have been because can you go back to formulas? It might have been because you might have clicked those buttons. So if you click Excel, uh, the button and then generate, and then go to the VBA. Oh no, that's weird. Well, Obviously, it only did it only I'll did it a couple times. I, know, I noticed weird. it before. Like I mentioned, <laughs> I'm not a coder. <laughs> it's just, it just wants those things that makes you go, huh? Yeah, yeah, you just never know with all that stuff. So, yeah, so if you hit submit, it's going to think about it. And just it already had, like, the answer basically down here. Um, but I think this is very good, especially for giving you a foundation. So um, I don't know, Billy, if you want me to go through this, but I'd love to talk about kind of the output here for a second. Yeah, let's go right. for it. Yeah, so yes. – uh, basically, they're just saying I is going to be a number, and we're saying it's going to be from 1 to, let's say you had 10 sheets, then this would be 10, right? We're going to go from 1 to 10, but what this is telling you to do is putting, uh, let's say this is cell 1, and then this is sheet number 1. It's going to take the name of that and throw it in cell 1, like A1, you know, and then the next time it goes through the loop all 10 times, right, for all 10 sheets. It's going to, so in A1, it would say sheet one and a2 would say sheet two or whatever that name was it's great but if you don't know like i said if you don't know the foundation the fact that we're dealing with cells and we're not dealing with displaying the names let's say on a pop-up message box or on a user form or in the uh, screen uh, at the bottom or all you know if you know that it's going to appear on your sheet that's really good especially because Let's say you had the active worksheet that you're looking at. You click a macro and run this. You have 10, 20 sheets. Guess what's happening to cell A1 through A, however many sheets you got. It's all gone now. It's been wiped out by this macro. And if you didn't know 
a little bit of foundational stuff, you can't undo a macro. So hopefully you have a backup of your workbook or you saved it, right? And that's not to say that this, this did a fantastic job. That's exactly the syntax you need to loop through all the sheets. It's fantastic. But you do need some foundation so you don't screw up your work. That's the only thing, if that makes sense. So. <laughs> oh, well, all that is that's why we have you here, Dan. Thank you bro. very much. <laughs> all I'm saying is if you have to know that you can't undo a macro typically. That's the part that I know no for sure. Did. And I think that probably everybody that's, right. that's made a macro before right. that's on this live stream right now knows that you can't undo a macro. Yeah. Yeah, because you could have 10,000 lines of code and what are they going to do? Memorize every single one? Not bog down your system memory. So they can't, they don't even try. They're just like, we're oh, not even going to try to memorize why You can't that. undo a macro because it only stores up to 100 actions at a time to sure. undo or redo. You could have oh. so many in your macro. They're just like, we're not going to mess with this. Users can do whatever they want with this. We're not going to memorize it all. I think that's what's up. So there's so, a reason yeah. for everything. But this is fantastic. I mean, this is really good. It's just like uh, we're, we're throwing together a code vault <clears throat> uh, on on my website, uh, but I, you know, I've been really slacking on getting it to be a good quality product. But this right there, you you have these basic macros that you need at your fingertips. So it's fantastic. So, yeah, man. Um, did you want me to try anything else, Billy? Or did you want to talk about anything yeah, else? Yeah, right why, don't you, uh, why don't you run through a few scenarios and uh, plug it into Excel and let's uh, let's see it work. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm so sure you've got let's do this one. Prepared. Let's do this. You want to just do this one on a worksheet really quick? Yes. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Sweet. David's so, sitting over there. David's like, Hi. <laughs> what's going like, to happen? I'm like, please work. Please work. Please work. No, please. it's going to work. It's going to work. Let me zoom in. You got that? So right now That's I have it. two sheets, right? So it's only going to do sheet one here and sheet two there, basically. But you hit, all, you hit Alt F11 to get into the Visual Basic Editor. Gonna make a quick code module to throw this code in and let's we'll paste whatever it said. So so far, didn't get any errors. That's a great thing. If I want to step through the code like slow-mo, like one step at a time, I can with the F8 key or I can just run it. So let's just run this one and see what's up. So let's run that. Boom! Look at there. Sheet one and sheet two. Perfect. See <laughs> yeah, and if I added several more sheets. It's going to work again on whatever the active sheet is. In fact, it's going to work. So if I got a new active sheet right here, now it's going to have four of them on this sheet, just like that. So it worked perfectly. And if I renamed them, you know, you get the idea. But if I renamed them, actually, it's going to override it. That's another thing you got to know. If you want to append data, or if you, you know, if you wanted to add it to the end of your list. This isn't going to do that. It's going to overwrite it. So you have to learn how to, you know, grab the last cell and then actually start moving onward from that if you wanted to append new things to a list. So there's always more you could learn, but this is fantastic. That's a good syntax. Yeah, does that make sense? I love it. How would you like to, uh, so I've got uh, like 10,000 uh, VBA requests thus far and I couldn't tell you what's right and what's wrong. And so, you know, 90, probably 95% of the requests that come in are for people asking for an Excel formula. And so, you know, I, I saw someone here talking about uh, chat GPT. Mm -hmm. uh, Excel formula is actually more accurate than chat GPT. A lot of it is based around the same technology, um, but I've manually gone in and, um, uh, fixed uh, four o'clock in the morning, thousands and thousands of Excel formulas that Dang. out of the box technology like chat GPT just gets wrong. Uh, and so uh, I was able to do that with Excel formulas. But uh, like I mentioned, I, I lack the experience when it comes to VBA. So Dan, if you're, uh, if you're looking for a project, uh, I've got a, a handful of uh, results that uh, were were deemed as incorrect. And so if you're looking for some work, let me know and I'll pass them to you. Yeah, we can we can chat about that. That sounds fun. Is, it's, I'm just amazed not. by the, this tool was built by a man that says he doesn't code. I don't code, but I made this tool for coders. 
<laughs> because when you write formulas, you're coding. That's the beginning, coding. the entrance into coding is writing formulas in Excel. That's yeah. the beginning of writing code. Yeah. Let's Carry on, my code. friend. Let's see what other what other cool oh hundred percent you got up your sleeve there for us. Yeah, it, it was just like David said, like with bubble or with Excel formulas or any other thing like that. If you can follow step by step and then just kind of you know build on that. Which one do I have here? Okay, let's do another one. Let's do an easier one. Um, now. Keeping in mind this tool is in beta, and like David said, there's a lot of uh, there's a backlog of things that you know he's he needs help with correcting. But so some of the uh, more complicated requests, uh, it might take a little bit longer to load or something. But this is a great tool. So uh, let's see. Um, here's a good one. If I want, I just want to change uh, my chart title. Let me say. Let me make it more basic. How do you change the chart title just using VBA? Or I don't, maybe I shouldn't put a question mark. I don't know if it matters. Let's do this. Change the chart title. Right. Right. So it gives you a, a pretty intuitive name. And then it assumes that you either have an active chart that is selected. You have to click on it in this case. But it'll take the chart titles, text, and allow you to basically you put any string of text you want in those quotes. And you guys want to try that out really quick? Yeah, let's try them all. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm going to go back here. Um, I have a lot of faith in the Excel formula, but I spent yeah, man. almost two weeks in it already. I'm going to make this real terrible because I don't feel like uh, like doing a big chart. How about we make that into a chart? Does that work for everybody? Yeah. Stuff yeah, one, F11. F11? Yeah. So, yeah, Boom. baby. Yeah, baby. So we have a chart on another sheet here. I don't know if that's going to, if it's going to be mad or not, but it, it shouldn't. So this is the active chart. You can see the little selection thing. So let's try this. Since it's selected, it should be all right. In fact, let's go slow-mo. We're going to hit F8 to actually step through the macro. Instead of saying chart title, it should say new title because uh, that is the active chart. We are on an active sheet. Oh, did you see that? Oh. Yes, and angels. Five. Shabam. Hot yes. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah, so the syntax is spot on. Um, if you want to, you know, get more specific, obviously you can learn VBA techniques to not have to select whatever chart you want. You can say, you know, this chart with this particular name just change the title automatically or whenever a new chart appears automatically have some naming convention based on whatever you want the current date the current time what sheet you're on what workbook name is what's the username of the computer who's logged in all that stuff you can automate that too but it takes a little bit more know-how so what sheet were we on earlier chart we, one uh, sheet, asdf sheet can you all see this fantastic. this uh question from dave right here asking for input and pass that to the function. Uh, let's see. Ooh. Sounds CBA. like a question not for me. I'm trying to scroll down. Oh, I can scroll down. Who's who said that? Dave. Excel Dave. gateway drug to coding. How about asking for input and pass oh, that to the is. function? Is that a trick question, Dave? Is that a challenge? Asking for input. Oh, okay. Oh, I like asking everybody in the chat and then using that. I, I don't think. think so. Dave, you're, you're going to have to clarify a little bit for us so we can come up with a good answer for you there. And uh, this one, uh, this, uh, this is a quick question. I was wondering about this one too, uh, David. W will it do formulas for conditional formatting or will it just uh, explain so, the basic tasks? Yeah, so it's a great question. Um, uh, so I, I mentioned uh, going in and handwriting all of the correct, the, all the formulas in which out of the box AI gets wrong. And so when people would ask questions like highlight column or highlight cells red when they are greater than 100, um, it used to write a statement and we'd say, if this, then red 
And so it wouldn't actually make it red, just the text value. It would turn into a, a text value string of it being red. And now, uh, with uh, fine tuning the model, uh, if you were to ask it now, it would uh, provide you with a recommendation to use one of the other generators, which accommodated in either VBA or basic tasks, where it lists out um, the steps to take in order to apply conditional formatting within the tab. So right now, uh, Larry, I guess uh, what David is telling us is that, you know, it's not actually going to give you the formula that you can put in for the conditional formatting, but it will explain to you the steps that you need to take to apply that conditional formatting that you're looking for. It'll uh, literally tell you, and, and you can try it, it'll, it'll tell you uh, uh, conditional formatting uh, cannot be configured within an Excel formula. Please try one of our other generators. Oh, okay. And then uh, Dave came back to us and clarified his question. Uh, yes. Can it prompt an, for an answer and then pass that to function to print in message box? Prompt for an answer. Are we talking about the formula stuff or maybe we're talking about VBA? Because I we're think talking we're talking about, about VBA boxes. here. Prompt for an answer and then pass that function to print in the message box. I'm thinking it may get locked up and say that that's too many commands at once, but I'm not sure. That might be a David question. I don't know. Um, so I think they're saying, can you say, hey, can we um, get, the re get the title of a chart and also put that in a pop-up called a message box? Can, can you give it multiple commands, I think is what Dave's asking. Um, and, I, and I don't know if it's since it's in beta, what do you think about that, Dave? Multiple commands, or should we just try it? <laughs> you know, this well, is what it's like. This is what it's like for the AI when we're asking it questions, right? And we're not really clear on the questions that we're asking, uh, or maybe we're really clear on the question that we're asking. But the AI is there thinking, "What are they asking me?" So they're just it just starts spitting out answers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, there, I, so I have a, a a best practice when it comes to asking for Excel formulas. I, I don't have a best practice when it comes to writing v, uh, VBA. Uh, and with VBA, uh, oftentimes it, it can be a very big chunk of code uh, in which I've found that uh, it, 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 it kind of times out. And I think that's some of the experience that you've had. So I, I recommend where you can breaking it apart into kind of bits and like smaller pieces where you can again. Um, but yeah, besides that, I would just say, let it rip and let's see what happens. Smart. That's what we're doing right now. Yeah. yeah just going for it. Well, let me uh, try it then. Yeah. You down with that? Uh, let's try it. All right. Let's see. So if I'm understanding, um, if I'm understanding Dave, let's just, uh, instead of changing the chart title, um, Let's say uh, reveal, I guess, active chart title and display in a message box. Let's see if that, you know, maybe that's going to confuse it. Maybe it's fine. Let's try it. Or maybe that's too many. Oh, would you look at that? It did. It combo mealed it. That's awesome. So, so Dave, if you're out there. Uh, I think you still are. It said, hey, let's do a message box of the active charge title text. That's brilliant. So, yes, uh, hopefully to answer your question, it did. It combined those perfectly. That's exactly how you would do that. I like it. Well, you, want, you want to try it? You want to try it in Excel? We can prove it. I'm pretty sure that's exactly how you would do that. So if I go here, shabam, chart title, I would probably rename that. Uh, later, so we don't have too many overlapping names, but we have an active chart. No, we don't. Now we do. We have an active chart. See, if I did that on the wrong sheet, I'd get an error. So if I run this, there's my message box with the chart title right there. It says, hot dang. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> yes. I like right that. On. Bring it on. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Hey, that's cool. Yeah, There's question. all kinds of angels playing all around here. <laughs> that was hey, cool. Good. So we, we're getting some uh we're getting some some good questions over here. It's I, there was one about uh 
you know, flash fill. Can you use the VOD? The VBA, you can, the answer, I can answer that. VBA, you could pretty much use for anything. Now, the Excel formula bot to do to, for flash fill, I think it would just tell us the steps on how to use flash fill, basically. It may, you know? it may. Could one also use a bot or VBA to do the same function as flash fill? Oh, okay, so not using the actual flash fill feature, but essentially looping through and do, yeah, I mean, uh, we could try it. Let's see. I'm trying to think of how I'd word that, though. Um, maybe I'll just ask it to, um, um, I don't know, use, I'm going to say use flash fill. Let's see what it says. Use flash fill. So if not, then I would say, you know, we need a loop. We need a loop that gets that divides the first name and last name or something like that, which it's already showed us it can use a loop whenever we ask it to print because it gave us how to do, you know, I is equal to zero. And then we're going to go from, from one to whatever number we want. It may, t it looks like it's probably going to time out for this one. It so might again, not, it might make it. it it's still not. going. Wait for it's it. It's still going. Stay uh, David is sitting there like David is like, oh, Stay okay, I'm gonna have it. Come on, man, he's stressing. <laughs> Don't stress. It's, it's like okay. we're in Las Vegas right now. I'm on. I'm in Las Vegas right now. We're uh, so waiting for okay. the results. So yeah, it's okay. Oh. That's okay. What would happen if you try in the basic tasks? In here, yeah. Let's go here. So basic tasks, and we're gonna basically ask it there, right? So. Yeah. Would I say how to, or should I just say use? Yeah, that's fine. Same thing. Okay. Let's try this. And maybe it'll tell us the steps to do that. There you go. Select a column. That's it. Enter data. Click flash fill. Great. So, yeah. You know, we we, we got it. So, you got options. You can, you know, you can always ask for this basic task, get the steps on how to do it if you can't figure out how to ask the question so that it'll give you the right VBA code or the right formula. Uh, right, we got a nice question right here. What about in addition to your site? And I think this could apply to all three of us. Excel VBA is fun. Uh, Excel Formula Bot and uh, myexcel.club. What about in addition to your site? In addition to your site, like when somebody, you know, you're, you're struggling with it because you can't just get up there and just type a question and get the VBA code and then, if you don't already know how to code, like you're not even going to know what to do with it. So I'm stuck now. When you're at, uh, when you go to myexcel.club, my website, and you get stuck right here, you can always just go to the, you can always just go to the community and within the community, you can ask. So it's not going to be an automated thing. And there's going to be an Excel expert, me coming on board. Now, as far as uh, Excel VBA, is is fun i don't know if you've got you know you got a chat feature in yeah, case you have any feature, questions which, which and then the excel formula bot i think what uh is being requested here david is some sort of help feature like right i can't figure out how to how to get the yeah. right answer and you know uh, then uh, yeah, I mean, it, 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 yeah go on sorry uh then it kind of says hey you know, uh, are you, if you're struggling with this, click here and you'll be contacted by an Excel expert or something. Yeah, so a couple of things. So one, one opportunity that I see from that question is uh, doing the reverse. So if you go to the formulas tab, right, you can, you can select, you want to generate, explain. Uh, I don't have that for VBA. So if someone is provided with VBA code and they don't know what the heck it's doing, much like myself, uh, it can explain it for you. So I see one opportunity there. Uh, the other one is, is every day, uh, whether it's through the little, little chat button there at the bottom right, or people just going through the contact us page every day, uh, I get people that drop in their CSVs and they're like, Hey, I need help. I need help with this VBA. <laughs> Or I need help with this. It's more than just the formula. Part of it goes back to what you were saying, like AI isn't going to replace humans. Humans that use AI are going to replace those that don't. Uh, exactly. And so, and so there's a, 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 there's definitely a market. It's, it's, it's something I actually thought about is 
looking to see if there's a, a partner out there or if it's just something we, we offer down the road of offering service-based consulting because there are, like I said, that people just drop these are like, hey, I need help. I'll, I'll pay you. I'm like, time for this right now. Yeah, could you? My, my, wipe my kid's butt yeah you're, you're gonna have to know how to use the ai yeah so you gotta know excel then you gotta know the ai so yeah. you start with the foundation now, since we're keep since we're talking about vba sounds like we got somebody here that's got you know some something that they're trying to do at work and they're taking this opportunity to see maybe we can help them out and this is for you dan can we try asking to give a vba code to read a range into an array Ooh, okay. Let's see how we would word that. So let's see, we want to, okay. So let's just word it as simply and as concisely as possible. Cause I know that's always a good policy with AI. You, you be direct and you don't, you know, use too many words, I guess. To, so can you put that back on the screen or let me see where it's, um, yeah, here we go. Okay. I'm just going to say read range into an array, or maybe I should give a specific range like a one through you know, B5 or something, but let's try this. Oops. Let me, oh, it's still me learning. Turn, I get, I get to refresh the page. Right there you go. Okay. I got to refresh the page because uh, it's still mad at me from earlier. So um, put, let's say, A1 through B5 into an array. Let's just ask it to do something like that. Okay. So it did not freak out. It's pretty happy with that. Is wanting to put that into an array. Okay, dim is, is a variant object. Um, K. So it's just straight up saying range A1 through B5 and throwing it into an array. Okay. Or you may want to use the transpose depending uh, if you want it to be, you know, you can have an array like this or you can transpose it into this or application.transpose. But yeah, um, you guys, we could look at that. You know what? Instead of me theorizing, let's test it. Test it yeah. out. Let's see. Yeah, man. Doesn't matter which sheet I'm on because we're actually, let's see, A1, what I say through B5 will be these. So let's put a little bit more information in here, like, just so we have some information in here. Not pretty information, but it's information. Okay, A1 through B5 is what it's going to talk about. So Alt F11, we're here. We paste this array example here, and we're going to step through this. So to step through again is F8 key. So this is going to make my array into a, a variable of variant type, and we're going to throw all this stuff from those cells into an array variable. So you can't see it by hovering it because it's got multiple values in one variable. So what we do... We're going to right click and we're going to add a watch. So in the watch window, we can actually pick this apart. So let's take a look. We'll, we'll, it'll make it a lot more clear. Yes, it worked. So check this out. We have an array, which is just what a range of cells is, right? It's just this by this, a grid. So one to five, and this one is one to two. So there's two columns, there's five rows. And if you look at this, the very first one is like this, sheet one and ASDF like this and this, right? So it worked perfectly. Yeah, I threw it into an array and it gave us the syntax exactly correct. 50 and 20, boom, boom. Nice. Yeah. There, Great there, question there, too. There's a few questions right here. Uh, maybe um, between uh, you and David, you can you can answer this. Okay. Is it possible to write a complex let function with Excel AI using argument variables? So that's more in the formula department though, right? Because the let function it's going to be yeah that's not going to be as much of the vba i'll just say to try it uh there's yeah. not a lot of uh I, I, at least i haven't seen too many of them um, I, I th is you, this you want to try I, it? I think i'm with you da da uh, david i think you just go for it you know just go for it kind of like when i was trying to to write a uh a dynamic, you know, function like, like for example, um, let, let's see. Do you want to give it a try, Billy, on yours, or you want me to go to the uh, formulas and give it a try? Yeah, why don't you give it a try since you're since yeah, you're I'm right already streaming, right? So maybe we'll go to explain, 
or do you want to generate? This is kind of, I don't care. Let's go to Excel and maybe we'll have it generate something for us. So let's see, we want a complex let function. I don't know how to ask that. Should we just ask it that straight up? Maybe, yeah. just, uh, maybe just start off with a basic, like, um, how to. Here, uh, why don't we do this? Yeah, go ahead. If someone were to um, type in the formula first and have it explain, and then we can do the opposite. So that way we've all, we all have a good understanding of what the, the let formula is actually doing and how to ask it. So does anyone okay. here want to type in an example of a formula? I have one. I can actually um, maybe send it to you. Through this okay, chat. go ahead and give me one. Yeah. Yeah. So equals let. We're going to let X. Okay. Sum. We need the sum of X. One. Five. So we want it to explain this, right? Is yep. that right? Okay, yep. so we're, we're going to submit that. Please explain what is up. Yep. And the output is create a variable x with a value of 5, and then calculate the sum of whatever x is plus 1. Spot on. Yep. Okay. So I guess the question was, if you had way more complicated stuff, would it uh, uh, spit this back out to us, I guess? So why don't we let's copy the output and then put that into the input. Nice. Okay. And then click and generate try to explain. And then let's just make this more robust. Uh, mm -hmm. Create a variable. Let's just variable. Let's let's call it variable y, uh, with a value of five. And then calculate the sum of x. Well, let's change that to y again. Uh, and do you want to just add something more complicated to the tail end of that? The sum of y and the square root of fifty. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I don't know how complex. Why not? It yeah. I mean, it's more complex than it was, so we should try it. So we're going to generate. For it. Let's just do it. Well, I think it already is done. I thought the, I thought the page was still loading, but it already spit it out really quick. It just gave it to you just like that, huh? So y is 5, and we need y plus 1, comma. Starting to have PTSD it. of all the, the algebra classes I took. as a, in <laughs> So sum of y and 1. And so it, it we we may want to uh, it probably would be best to put this in a sum function, mm -hmm. put sum here and then uh, ending parentheses here because the comma, you know, the comma probably should be a plus sign if we're adding that to the square root of fifty. Yeah. Overall, it did give us a pretty good syntax though. And if you like I said, if you know what's up, you can easily say, okay, well, I just need to put a plus sign there or make a sum function. But it pretty well kept up with what we wanted. It's just how to, you know, there's that little link right there, right underneath mm -hmm. generate, right above the submit box. It says review best practices. Uh, yeah. Right there is some good tips for, you know, how to talk to the AI. And, and you really right. got to think about the formula that we use in communication all the time. E plus R equals O, an event has occurred. We go straight to the outcome that we desire, and then we formulate the response. The same thing. We're always focused on the outcome when we're asking the question of AI <laughs> to solve an event. Focus on the outcome. And uh, we've got a few more, uh, some, some VBA-related questions, like uh, from Roz. Hey, Jen, before here. we hop into that, I actually have to go run to a meeting. But uh, thank you guys so much for Thanks, for David. Uh, uh, Dan, pleasure, pleasure meeting you. Mr. Loha. Good, uh, good chatting with you, man. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, let's let's definitely do this again. Yeah, we'll connect, we'll connect soon. All right, nice meeting you guys. Have a good Friday. One. Aloha, have a good one. Bye. Bye bye. All right, Dan, let's go. Let's keep on okay. rolling over here. So I got to tilt my head way. I got a big monitor. So uh, what is the next question? Could you give some VBA code for reading a JSON file, JSON file, and pasting the results into a sheet? Ooh, that's a fun one. So let's try that. So let's see if I can summarize this into the so the AI can help us. So read a uh, read JSON file and paste results. 
Let's see. That, that may be too many commands at once, but why not? We're going to try it. This has been fun. Let's see. Oh, snap. What Look at this. We... Oh. Using the file system object, which is how you interact with files on your computer, one way to do it. So we've got a sheet, basically sheet one, using the scripting object to get a text file or a JSON uh, file. Wants to read the whole thing into this variable, this, this, that. I don't have a JSON file to test, but it's using, uh, let's see, what's where's the JSON converter? Where's that coming from? See, okay. It's not actually saying where this JSON converter is coming from. So unless you guys see that being created prior to, I don't think that's a default thing in VBA, but I'm gonna, let me check really quick. Because there's, there's always more to learn, right? So let's hit Control G with this here. Or actually, we'll just go uh, do a test, right? I'm going to say JSON, what was it? Creator, JSON something. JSON converter. If it doesn't auto capitalize this, dot. Okay, so that doesn't exist. It's, uh, it's probably pulling code from somewhere else. Um, some repository or somewhere online. But so this wouldn't work, I'm thinking, out of the box. You know how right. when you write a macro, mm -hmm. you just press record? You're not actually writing code. We're just pressing record. Sure. And we're going through all the steps. And then you actually go into the Visual Basic Editor and you look at the code. I noticed that when, when we record the macro, it adds a bunch. Of, like if you wrote the code for, for how to add the name, you know, change the name to the title of a chart, or whatever. Yes. And then I try to record a macro that does that. The code that Excel itself writes is going to be like this long compared to what you write, which is 100%. just a little bit. Do you think <laughs> yeah. that's what, something that's going on here? It's possible. It's it's all. What I see is like a lot of this stuff makes a lot of sense, but then you get to a point where uh, this right here. You know, all these things, you know, the worksheet is going to be nicknamed WS, right? And then the file system object that, you know, read, uh, allows you to read files is being renamed into a nickname, FSO. But then you don't have anywhere where that actually came from. So it doesn't really exist. So it could be that, though. It could just be extra stuff. But I just, uh, this one might be one that we just need to submit into the Let's take a look at this and improve the product pile. Oh, if that makes yeah, because remember, there's a that that's incorrect button. Yeah, that we can yeah. Help keep training the AI. So, Razvan, there you go. I mean, uh, just try it. Whatever it is, this is going to be one of those situations. Right. You know, using AI, where if we can imagine it, let's just try it and let's just see what happens, yeah. and then start working our way. We can do like David was saying. You know, you know the formula. Put in the formula, then. You can just go through a few different steps within the AI mm -hmm. to arrive at your destination. Let's see what other, we had a, a few other ones. Uh, you know, what Dwayne was talking about, the reason that they wanted to code is because the flash fill is not always giving them the outcome desired. And yes. that's, that, that's just kind of how the flash fill is. It it's does not, it best, but. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's not going to always be exactly correct. It's kind of, you know, yeah. reading a pattern that's going on and then mm -hmm. it spits it out. So it, it, a lot of it has to do with what all is going on in your, in your spreadsheet. But, uh, I, I guarantee you, you can write the code that will guarantee oh, yeah. the I mean, outcome. You just got to figure could out try how. Some, I mean, could we try something like that though? We could say, uh, you know, separate, um, first name, and last name from column A in a loop. Uh, again, that might be too many steps for this beta, but it might actually, because it's been surprising me. Oh, what? It did not choke on that one. What do we got here? So we have a loop. Um, Just we're going try from it. one. Yeah, this is incredible. So uh, it's going, yeah, it's, uh, I use it. The XL up method is my favorite, so I agree with that. Whatever row you're in, we're gonna use the to get the last row. So we're just saying whatever the last row is of your actual data that's not blank cells, we're gonna go from one to whatever that row is. Brilliant, yeah. So we're looping from there, and everything inside the loop is gonna go several times. So basically, for each row, 
we're gonna it's putting it in, in um, column B and C, which is good because that won't overwrite A. Brilliant. And so yeah, it's trying to actually do that. Look at this. It's using a, a series of left, right, and mid, and in string uh, functions to to try to get the first and last name into those neighboring cells. I would say that was pretty freaking spot on. I'm impressed. I honestly thought it was going to choke. Uh, <laughs> I, I was like, because, you know, it's a very complicated series of things, but this looks great. Um, do you want to what, test what about the cell take cell? this out? This is a, this is interesting right here. Ask it to explain Jason converter. Oh. You know, I like how we're thinking instead of sitting <laughs> yeah. there wondering, just put it into the AI and let's just see what happens, you know? Cause copy, I think yeah, sometimes we start thinking, I wonder if it could do this. I don't think it could do this. And we decide in our own mind what the AI can do or can't do before we even ask it. So I say, let's not limit ourselves and let's just try it. Whatever it is, just try it. Okay. Let's try it. So let's see. So I'm just going to say, explain, json converter and by the, the way those of you who don't have the link i put the link in for the excel formula bot.com in the chat yeah. so you can access it perfect so i'm gonna hit submit i wonder if i needed a period let's just maybe yeah, it could, maybe it could be with have some do with rasvan is saying uh Jason converter mm -hmm. does not exist in VBA. It's not native to it. So they could have just been from some article or whatever in the world AI uses in their huge repository of information. I don't know how it works, but that's, yeah. So it didn't like that one or it doesn't have anything to say exactly. So yeah, it was a cool, cool test though. Hey, that's all we got to do is just got to keep trying, you know, just instead of sitting there, like I said, and us trying to think, figure out if the AI can do it or not. Let's just go straight to the AI and yeah, see if we can it. do it. All Absolutely. right, let's see here. Uh, there's a lot of questions that came through. I might have missed a few. So if I missed a few, just go ahead and feel free to ask it again. Here's how to gen how about generate Fibonacci string using a recurring function in VBA? We, what if we just copy that question and paste it? Okay, let me find generate. It. You think that? Let's see what happens. Yeah, I noticed that one. Oh, here it is. Generate Fibonacci string using a recurring function in DBA. Okay, I'm going to put this in command form. So here we go. Give me a Fibonacci. And it's working. Do, 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 do. <laughs> need a longer drum roll than that <laughs> <laughs> it's thinking really hard that's all this is really hard uh oh <laughs> well we wait we entertain <laughs> anybody got some uh, horn <laughs> <laughs> So, did I get that error? I think so what happened? Had a, I think I hurt its feelings. Oh. Oh, I did. I'm going to refresh. I have an idea. I'm not. Uh, one more thing. So, maybe I. it was too many words. Just got to keep, keep working at it. See, that's a, exactly what David was talking about. It's not going to be AI taking our jobs. It's the guys that know how to use a, the people that know how to use e AI really well that are going to take our jobs. So you got to understand the basics of Excel, understand some basics of VBA, Aha. and then get so, into the AI. Let's see what you got. So I am not a math whiz, like David said. Um, math stuff makes me hurt unless it's basic math and then for weird weird reasons i find it interesting but hey, um bogdan, is Bo if bogdan take a look at that does that look does that look okay to you yeah we need we need a consult so bogdan if you are still with us let us know what you think right there well there's only one loop here right k is three to whatever n is and N is however many items you want, but it's not, I, I feel like it should be a loop within a loop. Let's see, there's a next K. 
Right. So this is happening inside the loop. Everything in here is inside a for next loop. But I thought to do a Fibonacci, you had like have a loop and a loop or a loop and a loop and a loop. Yeah, it's not a recurring function. Oh, it's not recursive. Okay. Just it's a just a loop. Well, maybe this is right. I apologize for not being better at math. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, hop on ExcelFormulaBot.com and try this out. Or uh, we could probably just paste this in the thing. Dwayne, I'm going to uh, reshare that link again. There it is. Oh, shoot. I think the dot com came into the private, but they get the idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shell forming the bot. Perfect. Oh, I see. He's saying it should, it should call itself. So it should have reference to the name of the macro itself, like starting itself over calling itself so and we keep we keep proving this folks we keep mm -hmm. proving the ai isn't going to do it all for us we mm -hmm. we still got to have some skills and the skill is going to be being good at asking the right questions being good at the basics of our craft that we're using the ai as a tool to enhance our ability so you got to have a good solid foundation 100% all right, let me scroll through here and see uh, what else we got. But hey, everybody, just uh, just ask the AI. Just whatever. A lot of these questions that I'm seeing in here, just go right ahead and type it into AI. Like there was a question just a moment ago. Like, for example, how about separating numbers within a cell that are separated by commas? So the commas is going to be a delimiter. There's all kinds of different ways of doing this. You can type it into the uh, basic task, and then the formula body is probably going to tell you to use the uh, text to columns tool and maybe, you know, separate. Oh, this is separating numbers within a cell that are separated by, com by commas. Are they? Okay, this is a little bit different. How about separating the Well, I would just uh, type that into that's I would put that into the VBA. Ask the VBA to do that right there instead okay. of a formula. Uh, by the way, uh the uh Bogdan had said that he had misspelled Fibonacci the second time around I spelled it correctly and that's where we got this output. But let's try um the one that you had on the screen there just a second ago um talking about splitting basically using uh, splitting based by commas. Let me see if I can find that one. Oh, thank you. Separating numbers within a cell that are comma separated, basically. Random. So, okay. Um, let's say separate numbers from cell A1. Um, sep let's see. Num how did you say that? Separate all the comma separated numbers a1 it may give us some kind of split function or i don't know if i even am even asking this correct but let's try it hello it already spit out something so we have i so we're doing some kind of number loop right here's all the stuff inside the loop right because it's not indented for us but that's okay so if the okay The string is from cell A1. That's perfect. And so here's the string again. We're going however many characters the, the cell A1's string. Let's say it was the word, let's say it was the word Billy. B-I-L-L-Y. That means there's five characters. So it would go from one to five, the length of that string. And so each time it's going to look at the first character and then the mid function is going to do the second character, I. And then the third character, L, and then fourth, L, and then Y. And if any of those are a comma, it looks like it's going to do some kind of uh, fancy voodoo to uh, take that cell in, in column A and uh, throw that in. I don't really know what this is going to do. I'm just trying to keep up with this thing. Should we try it? Try it out. Let's see. Let's try it. <laughs> 
here I am trying to be all voodoo. And Houston, and uh, you and a uh, uh, Houston, if you and a few uh, have asked, how do you follow Dan Strong and and me, Mr. Aloha, on LinkedIn? And I'm gonna go right ahead and put in my uh, the link to my LinkedIn profile uh, right in there, and then uh, whenever Dan can put his in there, he'll put it in there, and then that way, let's connect. Yeah, I don't know if I it's not actually not letting me put stuff in that chat. All all I can do is private chat you, buddy. Oh, okay. I'll find we'll, I'll, we'll I'll work get on your, that. No worries. I'll get man. your link. Okay, so we're gonna try this one, separate numbers. Um, first of all, just being aware here that it looks like it's gonna overwrite cell A1 right off the get-go because I is starting off as one and we're doing something to cell A1, column it one and row one. So it looks like it's gonna overwrite itself. But at least we'll have the uh, original value of Aloha in this. So without the further ado, important. let's see what happens. Let's see it. I'm going to hit it. Okay, I just hit I just ran it. Looks like, oh, you know what? I need to do comma separated something in here is what I should have done. So yes. that's probably why it says Aloha. So let's do this. I'm going to hit a five. So it says six here and it has seven here. And that's it. Okay, so it was halfway close, but I think it got very confused about what we wanted. So, yeah, if you use the, the array function called split, you could get this stuff into an array, which would contain a 1 and then a 5 and a 6 and a 7. You could loop through and do whatever you want with that. Um, but it, it, it was trying to help us, though. Still a good syntax for doing a loop and some valuable stuff you can learn from that. So we're mid. either going to get the straight up answer that we need, or we're going to get pretty close to Very it close. and then rely yeah. on our basic skills ability to, you know, fine tune it. Just keep going back to that. You know, it's just 100%. a tool that is helping us be better. Mm -hmm. You know, and the ones that can use the AI real good and got a good solid foundation, you're the ones that are going to be the winners. And I got a question right here in regards to uh, what's the full What's the cost for the full version of this? You know, it's really affordable. What was it that Davis was charging for this? Let me uh, go back over to uh, Excel Formula Bot. And Excel Formula Bot right there. You can just go to pricing, Excel Formula Bot. And you got five. You can try it for free. Uh, five. You have five generations of every month for free. Then you've got this premium membership. And then you've got your business membership. So just go on over to the pricing section of the Excel Formula Bot. And you know, uh, in the if you're watching this on YouTube, there's a link. Go on right over to the whoops. pricing section of the Excel. Uh, let's go right over here. And here's my, my affiliate link for the Excel Formula Bot. I'm going to put it in the chat for you. And then when you go to make a purchase, let's say uh, I can't go to the purchase because I'm already, when I log in, I'm, uh, I already have a yearly subscription. So it's going to, okay. So use the, use the coupon code Mr. Aloha when you go to check out. And then that will give you an additional 10% off whatever discount. Uh, the Excel Formula Bot has going on. So Formula Bot. Nice. nice. Yeah. And then, of course, I encourage you to come check out Excel VBA is fun. And then we got the seven steps to Excel success at myexcel.club. When this is for Excel basics, we're getting the basic $7 a month and we're learning the seven steps to Excel success basics. All right. Now we're back over here. What, what I recommend uh, to all of you is don't be scared of AI. Embrace it. Be scared if you don't understand the basics of whatever it is that you're becoming proficient in. Okay, You got to lay a good solid foundation in Excel that involves you know, the basics, design, build, calculate, print, automate. Seven steps to Excel success. Work your way into coding. Work your way into tables. Work your way into structured references. Work your way into VBA. And then next thing you know, you're a winner because you know the basics and you got AI skills 
E plus R equals O. Remember that. We focus on the outcome. Uh, anything else? Uh, anything else you want to talk about right now, Dan? Any other final questions before we end this live stream? No, but I think you're 100% right. You know, when they had the, what, the iron industry went, what, went out of business like that, and whenever steel came in, then there's stainless steel now, and all that, you know, as long as you have the tools, and as long as you're able to keep up with the foundational stuff that's important, you're not left out in the cold. So, you know, me and Billy can help you, and yeah, I just appreciate you having me on. This has been a blast, dude. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thanks, Dan, for for being on here. I mean, uh, I I couldn't have, I couldn't have done this without you. And it was also nice having David. You know, I just imagine David sitting back there, like getting all these <laughs> getting all these questions, and he's if, if quickly typing the answers and saving a whole bunch of answers and then putting them into the AI. You know, it's fun. The AI is David back there, and he's got his baby right here. He's holding it while he's you know answering us. <laughs> that guy, I'm impressed. I'm definitely impressed. So um, let's see. Uh, here, Houston's got a quick question for, for us here. Thanks, Dave, for joining us. I've been taking numerous Excel courses on LinkedIn Learning. They all show a stable version of Excel. Okay. Uh, Excel 365 is basically Microsoft 365, all right? Microsoft, it's a subscription service. So like, let's say you get... Excel, a standalone version, Excel 2019, for example, it's, it doesn't update. It just sits on your computer. And Microsoft for the past few years has been working us into a subscription model. We evolved into Office 365, and now they're calling it Microsoft 365. Everything's bundled into that membership. And then you just pay a monthly membership and you're always going to have, you're not going to say, hey, I have Excel version, you know, this or that. You're always going to have the latest version. Microsoft 365, as long as you're paying your subscription, it's always available to you. And you know that Microsoft is available for free also, right? Just go to office.com and sign up for free. So, uh, all right. Looks like uh, Houston, we, we uh, put in the chat. We, you know, we put in our LinkedIn profiles. Just you can search uh, Daniel Strong on LinkedIn if you didn't see our our links already, and just uh, Billy Wiggly, and uh, you'll find us on LinkedIn. But uh, oh, good job, Houston! You took the annual subscription. That's the way to go. Nice. And it's very affordable now. Excellent. Right on. I'm gonna say. So hey. Uh, we're going to go ahead and end this like we always end. We don't get mad, get skills. We always encourage a positive mental attitude. We're always going to say, keep on learning. We love you. And most of all, don't get mad, get skills, my friends. Aloha. <laughs>